profits prior to incorporation a concept that arises when a company is newly formed to take over an existing business with a retrospective effect that is the date of incorporation of the company happening to be later than the date of takeover we told you that not always the companies are formed to have a new business companies are always not formed to have a new business many times so please stop talking enough many times the companies are formed to take over an existing business it could be a proprietary business or a partnership business being taken over by the company either by the proprietor or partner themselves float a company or it could be some third party is floating a company wants to take over the business generally the valuation the taking over of business will take place only from a balance sheet date but there could be a possibility that the formation of the company is not happening on the balance sheet date the formation of the company not happening on the balance sheet date there be after the formation they are taking over the business with a retrospective effect so when they take over such company with retrospective effect the profit from the beginning of the year belongs to the company but profit only from the incorporation can be considered as revenue profit or earned profit of the business and that profit only is available for dividend purpose the profit earned prior to the incorporation is dash natured profit not available for dividend purpose which will be classified as goodwill or capital reserve why goodwill why capital reserve we will discuss separately when we discuss the acquisition related entries accounting part presently we will like to understand how to apportion the profit of the first year first reporting period which may be 12 months more than 12 months or less than 12 months please respond yes, the first reporting period not only first reporting period any reporting period of a company can be more than 12 months or can be less than 12 months we are in discussion we are in the process of giving the lecture please don't talk so the reporting period of a company can be more than 12 months it can be less than 12 months it can be 12 months right yes, and it will go up to 15 months with central government permission it can go even up to 18 months everybody yes, so thereby the company's accounting period which can be in any range of period so between 1 month to 18 months so we should be very careful in identifying what is the reporting period could you appreciate that so thereby we are going to learn through this topic apportionment of the company's profit or loss of the first reporting period into pre and post pre incorporation period profit or loss post incorporation period profit or loss this can't be done with one working note it is not just apportion the net profit alone so the net profit which is arrived by various incomes and expenses so we are going to apportion various incomes and expenses in the proportion various proportion and we are going to apportion that as pre and post incorporation profit or losses the last class we told you there are four bases of such allocation what are the four bases time ratio sales ratio a direct allocation specific allocation understood certain items are only direct allocation now let us uh, let me give you something uh, some uh, expenses head you tell me whether it is what basis you will apportion everybody salaries time ratio rent commission commission sales ratio everybody electricity time ratio understood then uh, interest interest time ratio depreciation depreciation time if for all these item any specific information given specific allocation otherwise all these items are printing and stationery printing and stationery time ratio only understood please respond audit fees audit fees 
time ratio. Please understand that audit fees you should not say exclusively related to the company. So the auditor should cover all the aspects of the audit. Everybody, the financial statement if you have for 12 months. So we can't tell that we will audit only for the 9 months period of the company's information, the 3 months period we will not cover. So in the financial statement whatever is applicable everything has to be covered by the auditor. So that way audit fees should be apportioned based on. We are not telling audit was performed throughout the year. But audit covers all the aspects of the financial statement. Which is applicable for 12 months means it is applicable for 12 months and pre post will be divided based on the time. Could you appreciate that? Please respond. So it won't be based on sales ratio, it is based on time ratio, it is not specific allocation. Debunch and interest. Direct allocation. Only to post, not to pre. Direct test remuneration. Directly to post. Are you following? Direct test remuneration will be directly to which will not be allocated to pre and because for the pre-incorporation period, before the formation of the company, there can't be a director. In a proprietary concern, the proprietor can't call himself as I am the director of the company. Are you following? So, thereby, director's fees will be directly to post, debenture interest, interest paid, time ratio, everybody rent paid, audit fees, preliminary expenses written off. Preliminary expenses written off, not in pre. Preliminary expenses written off should be in post. First of all, preliminary expenses mean formation expenses of the company. It is written off means it can't be written off in the pre period. It is written off in the so after incurring after incurring the expense only you can write off the expenditure. Are you following? So such write off will be in the post incorporation period. Please respond. Here is the one place we have one more discussion that. In the pre-incorporation period profit will be called as capital profit. Yes. Please respond. Yes, so such capital profit can be used for writing of capital losses. The only advantage of capital profit can be that it can be used for writing of capital. one of the capital losses preliminary expenses. Please respond. Yes. So thereby the capital profit, capital reserve, pre-incorporation profit can be used to write of preliminary so that way preliminary expense can be shown in pre, also it can be shown in post. post. Could you appreciate that? Please respond, Ba. Yes, sir. So preliminary expenses, if it is right off, na, it belongs to pre-incorporation period or post-incorporation period. As such, it belongs only to But pre-incorporation profit can be used for writing of preliminary expenses and thereby it can be taken in the pre-incorporation period also. Correct? Yes, but always you can't take. Suppose pre-incorporation is there. Uh, loss. You have loss in pre-incorporation means it is must that you should take only in thereby to have a standardized answer institute always take preliminary expense in the and thereby we also going to take preliminary expense only in the but we can understand we should be aware of a knowledge that so even the pre-incorporation profit can be used to write off Preliminary expenses that is a knowledge that we are having but in our solution always we take preliminary expense in the don't verify pre incorporation profit or loss and loss we just like that take preliminary expense in the post incorporation period could you appreciate that there are many items which will be based on time ratio some item will be based on sales ratio some item is directly certain other items specific information given go for specific allocation clear now you won't take trading account into pre and post for tr using trading account we'll find out gross profit so trading account will be prepared for the entire period only and we'll find out gross profit which will be apportioned to pre and post understood so what we are actually preparing is not a p and l to be reported to outsiders please respond for uh, reporting to outsiders we prepare only the uh, total p and l only for the entire accounting period correct so what we are doing is only an internal statement just for finding gross profit as well as pre and post incorporation profit or loss. Correct? This pre and post incorporation profit finding is not for the purpose of external reporting. Please respond. So thereby this need not follow a format of company sector and all just like that we take in a normal way. So we can take profit and we can take expenses and we can find out net profit or net loss. Correct? Yes, there is no need that you should be taking employee compensation expense, borrowing cost, finance cost, 
depreciation amortization like that you need not take the company side format because this is not reporting financial uh, info statement it is only for internal purpose for apportioning into pre and post incorporation profit shall we proceed so how do you present this particular uh, financial statement it is very simple we will be presenting the p and l account showing the apportionment of profit into pre and we will be having particulars everybody basis ratio total pre post credit debit are you following this so what and all we will have so we will be having by gross profit basis sales ratio we will write the ratio we will write the total amount then we will split into pre and like that every expenses we will write as what is the basis specific allocation time ratio sales ratio we will write and what ratio we will be writing here 1 is to 2 1 is to 3 like that the ratio we will be writing total amount we will write split into 3 and 4 post understood uh, then we will take the gross profit here expense total here and find out pre and post profit are last this is what we are going to do th through this entire chapter understood uh. everybody for that we may, may have specific working notes uh. working note number 1 will always be time ratio 2 will be other items based on specific information available correct uh? please respond so this is what we are going to try through this particular question so the topic is apportionment of Profits of a company into pre and post. When such apportionment will arise? What is the need for such apportionment? When such concept will arise? When a company is newly formed to start own business? Wrong. When a company is newly formed to take over an existing business on a prospective basis? No. On a retrospective basis, understood? Then only such concept of pre and post profit arises, correct? What is the need, sir? Anyway, pre or post or belongs to company, no? Not belongs to company, yeah. Pre or post or both the profit belongs to company only, correct? So there is no need for split. Why to split? Total profit belongs to company, la? But usage of the profit, sir, post incorporation profit available freely for any purpose, including dividend. Pre incorporation profit not available for dividend, it is in the nature of dash. Thereby, we should apportion the profits and losses into pre and post. For, for that purpose, all the income and expense should be apportioned to pre and post. We have four bases sales, direct, specific. Correct.